Hi, my name is Philip Arouse. I'm a radiologist at the Mayo Clinic, and I'm going to be talking about some cardiac devices. The learning objectives are to know the proper positioning of dual lead pacemakers, recognize leadless pacemakers, know the proper positioning of biventricular pacemakers, also known as cardiac resynchronization devices, and recognize the WISE CRT, which is a wireless cardiac resynchronization device. Here we have a frontal radiograph. We have a dual lead pacemaker. This is the device and it has two leads. One is in the right atrium and one is in the right ventricle. Notice this passes through the tricuspid valve, which is down here. If we go to a CT scan and peel away, peel away, peel away, we can see that the right atrial lead is right there. It's in the right atrium. The right ventricle sits out in front and there's the right atrial lead and the right ventricular lead is anterior. As we rotate over to the lateral, we see that the right ventricular lead is anterior. The right ventricle sits anterior, the left ventricle sits more posterior. Here's a separate patient. We have a single lead. Is that lead passing through the tricuspid valve? Possible, it's a little bit high. But we go over to the lateral, we can see that this lead is not out anterior, which for as far out as it was in the frontal, it should be much more out anterior on this lateral. Is that out in the RV apex? I don't think so. Let's go to the CT scan. If we peel away everything, we can see that we have left ventricle and aorta, and that lead is in the LV. It's in the left ventricle. We go over to a four chamber, and we can see that we have right ventricle, right atrium, left ventricle, left atrium. This lead is passing through an atrial septal defect. That structure is a left SVC. That lead tip is in the LV. We go over to the lateral. We see the lead is in the LV right there, and this is the left SPC. Different patient. Now, what is that thing? That is what we call a leadless pacemaker. There's a lot of advantages to that. It doesn't require a surgical pocket. We decrease the risk of infection. Some people mistake it for a loop recorder, but that is subcutaneous. This is in the right ventricle. This is placed completely intravascularly. No need to co cut open the skin. You go through the IVC, stick the lead in the right ventricle and it detaches. Here's a different patient and we can see where this leadless pacemaker is on the CT scan. When we peel away everything, we can see that it's attached to the RV free wall, right atrium, right ventricle, left ventricle, the right ventricle goes to the pulmonary artery, left ventricle goes behind to the aorta and there's the pacemaker. We can see that it's got these little tines there, these sharp little tines, which are for attachment. Now what we're seeing here is the contrast, the myocardium is a little bit thicker. Here's a separate patient. There is our leadless pacemaker. This is a day after this was placed. Two, uh, I think two months later, he comes in with shortness of breath. Cardiac silhouette is much larger. Why is that? Well, let's look away at the CT scan and we see that we have a large pericardial effusion. We rotate over to the lateral. We see the large pericardial effusion. We can see there's the effusion there. Deep to it, we have soft tissue, which is actually the heart. And in between, we have a little layer of fat. Now that layer of fat is gonna be dark on a chest X-ray. So we get white, dark, white on a lateral chest X-ray, which is a sign of a pericardial effusion on a lateral chest X-ray. And there's that fat, epicardial fat right there between heart and pericardial effusion. Pericardial synthesis was performed and we can see this device on the CT scan. If we peel away the bones, there it is right there. Right there, it's perforated through the right ventricle. Again, this is the contrast. There's a layer of myocardium that we don't see here, but even so it's perforated through. There's the leadless pacemaker perforating. This is a pericardial drain. And if we look, this is a four chamber LVRV. We've perforated a little bit. And then we can see in a short axis that these tines have penetrated through into the epicardial fat and have actually gone into the pericardium a little bit, causing this pericardial fusion. This is left ventricle, right ventricle, and short axis, and the pacemaker and cross section. Okay, now what do we have here? We have three leads, one in the right atrium, one in the right ventricle, and a new one that's in a cardiac vein. It goes through the coronary sinus, goes in the great cardiac vein, goes along, continues along right up to the LV apex. And this lead is right up against the LV anterior wall, which we can see here as we peel away. 
we have, um, there's the RV out in front. There's this pacemaker, the right ventricular pacemakers in the RV, but this one in the epicardial vein is pacing the LV. You're pacing the RV and the LV. If you pace them synchronously, you can improve cardiac function. And this is a treatment for heart failure called cardiac resynchronization therapy. If we go over to the lateral, we see that this lead has this loop, goes through the coronary sinus and into the epicardial vein, overlaps a little bit with the right atrial lead here. And there's the right ventricular lead there. If we give it the lateral again, oops, gone off way fast. So here we go. Right atrial lead, right ventricular lead. Is that lead in an epicardial vein? Is that lead in an epicardial vein? Kind of looks like it. What on the lateral? Kind of looks like it. We kind of loop through here into an epicardial vein. Meanwhile, down here we have the right ventricular lead. This this is a defibrillator lead in a in the right ventricle. And over the next few days, this device wasn't capturing. Patient was brought back, and what do we see? But the but the lead has moved, it's migrated. How can that happen? How can you move if you're in a vein? Well, we get a CT scan and we can see that that lead, is it really in a vein? Well, no, it's actually way out here in front. This is the calcified LAD. If we go over to a four chamber, we can see that this lead is in the pericardial space. There's epicardial fat, left ventricle, right ventricle, and this thing is out in the pericardium in the pericardial space. That explains the poor capture, explains the lead shifting positions. We go over to a lateral, we can see the lead tip in the pericardial space. We fill it in, there's the lead outside of the LV cavity, this is the LAD. We fill in on the lateral, now we see the right ventricular lead and the this is supposed to be a, a lead in a vein kind of overlapping. We still have the right atrial lead where it's supposed to be. This is where it's supposed to be, but this guy was not in the pericardium. We also see the dark, the white, dark white on the chest X-ray. There is a piece of fat sandwiched between heart and pericardium, pericardial fluid. So, okay. Now, what is this guy? What is that? This is a leadless pacer, which can be placed in the RV. So can we do something similar in the LV for cardiac resynchronization therapy? If we could put this guy as sitting in an epicardial pacemaker, it'd be preferable to have a leadless device and we'd prefer it to be in the LV cavity. And that's preferable to placing it in a vein because if you're in, an, like this guy's in the vein, if you're in the LV cavity, you can pace better, but it would, you'd have to be very small to avoid collecting thrombi. But with electrophysiological methods, you could optimize the location of this pacemaker and pace better than you could by putting in a, in a vein, which is near the surface. You could put in the exact spot in the LV myocardium that you want. How could you make a device so small that could still pace? We can do this. This is called the WISE CRT for wireless stimulation, stimulation endocardially. The RV lead is placed with the RV and the LV is implanted with a tiny device, the, si the size of a grain of rice, tiny, and then how does it get its power? This is a subcutaneous ultrasound device. It senses the RV pacing and then submits, uh, emits acoustic energy to this device, which is converted to electrical energy, which then paces. So all of the action is now subcutaneous. So our CT scan in some ways and is exciting because the action is subcutaneous. There is the ultrasound device on the skin. This is its battery. All the energy is subcutaneous. This is the RV device because we still have a lead in the RV. And there's our tiny grain of rice pacing the LV. We rotate laterally. The main thing that shows up on the lateral is the ultrasound device and its lead. So in summary, dual lead pacemakers, the RV is anterior. Leadless pacemakers sit in the RV, leadless pacemakers. For both of them, you can perforate and have effusions. Biventricular pacemakers or cardiac resynchronous devices have LV lead in a cardiac vein. And why CRT is a wireless cardiac resynchronization device. And that's it. Thank you very much.